Welcome to another episode of Mike's Big Martial Knife Exploration Journey. Though today's episode won't be quite as big and maybe not as martial, we'll see. But I've recently reviewed a couple of pretty affordable Joker knives from Spain, surprisingly impressed by them. In fact, the Zorro, despite how light it is for an 8-inch blade and my concerns about the rat tail construction, has already become one of my favorites. It's a great martial tool and also a great utility blade. Very sharp, very slicey, and unexpectedly choppy. It's held together just fine. The edge is held up. I barely had to refresh it and really liking that grip shape. So here I am thinking, utility use. The Zorro does come in a variety of blade lengths. So would going one step down to make for a more useful all-around utility knife without sacrificing too much of its martial potential. And if we're talking about utility use, though, um, that back guard, while it is awesome for martial application, does potentially get your way for certain utility jobs, especially if you want to put your thumb up on the back of the blade. And in their hunting knife line, there is a model that would give me most of what I like about this knife, the steel the blade geometry, that grip I'm really starting to love, but doesn't have a back guard on it. And I did spoil it in the Zorro review, but today we're going to take a look at the six and three quarter inch long Joker Tigre. Out of the box edge. Shaving sharp? Yes. Now we are talking about the same 4116 German Mova steel as the other two jokers we've taken a look at. Same hardness range according to my test file, somewhere between 55 and 60 HRC. But okay, blade thickness geometry. Spine is kind of in between the two jokers we've already taken a look at. The chamois 5 millimeters thick, the Zorro 3.8 millimeters thick, this is 4.2. But I just feel like, it's really hard to measure, I've got more meat behind that hollow ground edge. This is not nearly as fine, keen, uh, well hollow as the other two jokers that we've taken a look at. So what does that do to its cutting capacity? Now, it doesn't have a back swedge on it, does have a trailing point, but yeah, slicey extremely. Some cardboard, and yes, we're going to put it through the usual tests, but yeah, no problem. Sheath, like the other Jokers, nice, thick, dark brown leather, accent stitching, and you've got the Joker logo stamped into it. It's also, again, a pretty thick belt loop with thumb brake diagonal strap, which is on the edge side of the knife, but given it's a one-sided guard, you don't really have any choice there. Fit out of the box, pretty snug. It's, it's been breaking in, but given they describe this as a hunting, camping, fishing knife, I don't think quick draw was at the top of their priority list for design, but functional, secure. However, one interesting thing about it is it, it does have a bevel cut here for a back guard. So I'm just assuming this is a, well, one size fits all knives of this blade size and shape. Um, it, it's a little odd, but it doesn't terribly bug me. So sheath, I'm going to say, not bad. Fit, finish, build quality, specs. Going to be, again, a lot of similarity with the other two jokers we've taken a look at. Refer to those reviews if you haven't seen them already. Includes price range. I paid about 67 US dollars for this at Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description. So I made it a pretty affordable option. Am I getting my money's worth? We'll talk about that. Now I'm going to call this a step down or two in blade length from the Zorro, the 8-inch blade. They do have 7-inch blades. This one is 6.75 inches long, 17 centimeters width. Well, it's kind of hard to measure. I'm going for the point at the top of the thumb ramp is the widest point. 
one and five sixteenths of an inch, three and a half centimeters. We already talked about the spine, a 4.2 millimeters thick, but I'm going to come back to that when we talk about the guard fit. Grip. All right, exact same grip as the other two jokers, four and a quarter inches or 11 centimeters long. Odd shape, but yeah, really growing on me, really coming to appreciate it in olive wood that I call finished but not finished. In other words, it's, it's very smooth, well sanded, very clean lines, but it's not lacquered or anything. And I have discovered, yes, that this holds up really well to getting wet. And getting wet actually makes it grippier. So that's a nice touch. Overall length, 11 and 3 sixteenths of an inch, 28 and a quarter centimeters. Wait, okay, it's a bit shorter, but a bit thicker than the Zorro. So I expected a similar weight, and this one is it's just a little bit lighter, 7.8 ounces, 221 grams, point of balance, just right in front of the guard. Talk about that in handling, but let's talk about that fit finish. Blade, just like the other ones, it's got kind of that brushed finish, or, well, suggest to me that maybe they gave up at about 120 grit on the belt sander. But, yeah, not bad. Lines are pretty clean, but, yeah, they wander a little bit here and there, not too badly. Deeply etched logo that tells you not only the brand, but the knife name and the steel. Now, no back edge, swedge, anything like that. Am I going to try to add one? Probably not. I'm going to keep it in sort of this utility configuration. Nice big thumb ramp. There's no jimping on it. I may add some, but yeah, I can get a whole lot of thumb up on that blade. Speaking of getting fingers up on blade, yeah, there's a nice big space here too to hook my index finger up above the guard. So that's nice. Yeah, I can really get my hand up high on the blade, close to the edge, and we'll talk about that in utility use. But as already mentioned, same guard as the other two knives, just missing the back projection which gives me plenty of clearance from my thumb. I'm catching it a little bit, but it's, it's not uncomfortable. doesn't really feel like it's in the way. Not a smooth transition, but not a bad transition either. But when it comes to fit finish, okay, just like the other knives, everything's tight. Now, this is a rat tail construction. I do not know if it's a full rat tail. You got that metal butt cap on the end. Don't know if that's just glued on, tacked on what, but there's no sign of a, the end of a rat tail coming through there. And from what I can see of the gap that, rat tail tang is probably about half an inch wide. So far the other knives have proven surprisingly durable, even chopping with them. We'll see if this one is the same. But, okay, thickness of blade and gap. The chamois had a really tight gap. The Zorro, I could see more space in there. This one, again, I've got a pretty tight gap. And I think the issue is that all of these guards are sort of made in a batch, but then the different blades are, are different thicknesses. So that definitely will tell you, um, predict how much of a gap you're going to get in the guard. This one is just nice and clean. So I'm going to say fit and finish on this one for the price is really good. Let's go ahead, and I will, I haven't done this yet, I will do my impact and durability test. Speaking of which, if you flash back to that Zorro review, after I did the thrusting test, I discovered a bit of a bend in the tip, and I didn't know if that came from the test, or it was that way out of the box, because I wasn't paying attention. This time I was paying attention, and on this one, unfortunately, yeah, there's a little bit of a bend to the right in the tip. Um, don't know how much you can see that, but yeah, it's, it's there. That is an issue. Is it terrible? No. Is it fixable? Probably very. But let me go ahead and run my usual tests, and we'll talk about how it did.
So how'd it do? I'm going to say pretty darn well, not as slicey and keen as the Zorro. There's definitely more meat behind that edge, but pretty good. Now, my first test, stabbing and thrusting into my pal stab him, which is several layers of thick cardboard backed up by a couple of inches of compressed brown paper bag paper backed up by wood. Stabbing and thrusting in four grips. Two in the forward grip, two in the reverse grip. So with the edge facing away from me and the edge facing towards me. Now, with the edge facing towards me in both the forward and the reverse grip, you definitely get different tip geometry from that swept tip. For me, it makes it a bit easier to get the tip on. And also, there's not so much of a hooking action, especially in the reverse grip, that tends to get my blade stuck in the pel. The penetration was really good. Now, a couple of issues, though. One, yeah, I think I did bend the tip over just a little bit further during that test. And uncomfortable kickback. Especially in the reverse grip, the guard did bite my hand a little bit. And on the other jokers, I have slightly dehorned the sharp edges. Haven't really changed the shape of the guard at all. But yeah, there's a couple of sharp edges there on it. So just a little bit of discomfort. It was noticeable, but not egregious. Now, I also cut up a lot of cardboard because I had to make some repairs to stab him and break down some boxes. And i done fruit prep a couple of meals. So yeah, it was a very useful tool for food prep, meat and veggies. But then out to the harder tests. The abusive test, hacking and slashing into a piece of hard bamboo. Now, probably notice there's a different angle on the camera for that test. Why? Because we're in the six months of dark and radiant. I'm having to figure out how to work around it. So I had to keep the camera under the cover of my patio uh, and, and shot long on it. But I'm trying to make it work for you so I can keep doing these videos. Now, I did go a little bit hard on it. Forward reverse grip at sometimes some pretty extreme angles. Again, the name of the game is to see if I can intentionally induce a chip or a roll in a fragile edge. And the answer is, uh, nope, it came away with zero damage, zero diminishment. So on to the board test, which you also see I, I shot in a different location to keep the camera undercover. But yeah, carving on the boards, shaving on the boards, it's not quite as keen as the Zorro, but it also did a pretty good job and yeah allowed me to choke up further on the blade for some of that work so that made it more useful is it the most ergonomic knife i have for those tasks no and i might make some changes to the grip shape to make it fit my hand better improve those ergos i don't know yet we'll see that could be a to be continued but chopping into the boards didn't bite as deep as the Zorro did, but it still did pretty well as a chopper. Is it designed to be a chopper? No, but again, in a pinch for a small job or an emergency, you, you could use it like that. And nothing came loose and it felt just fine under that kind of impact. Now, again, I have to throw my usual caveat out there. I'm not doing hard extended bushcraft testing with it. I'm just doing a series of basic durability and impact tests to see how the edge, the build holds up and how it translates that impact back into me and it passed all those tests just fine. So let's talk about my martial impressions. So as a utility knife, yeah, it's, it's a pretty useful tool. You know, what about martial application? All right, I don't have a lot to say about carry. I've been carrying it from the belt loop and also shoved into my waistband for cone carry style. It is a bit snug and sometimes, yeah, the, the thumb brake strap catches on the guard, so not the smoothest draw, but it's, it's getting better with break-in. But again, I, I don't think that's the primary 
design for this knife. Joker refers to it as hunting, camping, fishing knife. Martial potential, well, it's a knife of significant effective length. But compared to the other designs we've been taking a look at, okay, there's certain things it does well in certain areas it's lacking. But first, yes, I did slightly change the shape of the grip. Little bit of in-cut flare here, little bit down also at the bottom. Now, putting those divots kind of here at the top does allow me to get a much better grip at the top for utility use but also assists, I feel like, in martial application. In the hammer grip, yeah, it's, it's pretty firm now. Can I hook my finger up over the top of the guard on this side? Yes, absolutely. Can I lock my thumb up on top of the guard for those uses? Absolutely. So in that full-fisted grip, I feel like I've got some slashing, but not much blade authority to speak of, especially up top here. We'll get back to that. Stabbing, yeah, that is, that is a very stabby tool, so that's certainly useful. Now, apparently they call it the tigre because they say it resembles the claw of the tiger. Oh. <laughs> All right, putting a little flare down here at the bottom. When I choke down on it, it rolls more in my hand. That gives me a better snap cut and a better feel when I'm extending into a longer thrust. Out of those two functions, yeah, I can get some snap cutting out of it, but I'm just not feeling like I have much there to count on in a life or death situation. But thrusting, again, yeah, this is a great thruster. I can use a handshake grip. I can use a saber grip. It definitely gets around corners a little bit. I can change the tip geometry, the angle of that tip, by flipping it around edge towards me, North American buoy style. So those applications work. Now, I don't have any back edge to work with for any kind of back cutting. So that's a bit of a drawback. But another place where this excels, I found, is in the reverse grip. But first, let's talk about transitions. Since I put that little bit of flare there towards the bottom, I now have a really good indexing point for pinch flipping. It is a little thick, even with the in-cuts I made at the top. From a finger twirl, I can do it, but yeah, it feels like I'm twirling a piece of lumber. And that's not a method I recommend because it's not very secure. But yeah, pinch flip transitions now. Between the natural grippiness of the olive wood and just a little bit of taper and flare there, I've got a great consistent point to transition. And in the reverse grip, I think this is actually where this knife excels. I feel like I have decent capacity for slashing in this grip, but especially stabbing, which has a little bit of hooking effect. Now, if I rotate the blade the other way, yeah, I've got that kind of back cutting and stabbing in this geometry, which again just changes the angle of the tip. I'm finding when I'm striking into my pel with the blade facing towards me, it's not getting stuck. It's still penetrating, but it's not really getting stuck in the target like it is when it hooks in doing that. So, useful, but I do have to say that knife really wasn't made for that. Could you use it in a pinch as a defensive tool? Absolutely. But if you're looking for a purpose-built martial knife or one that's a bit more martial and still utility, it might not be your best choice unless you just kind of like the way it looks and how it feels. And I do. Um, it's a nice little knife. I'm getting a lot of use out of it just in, in general utility use. I think I'm using this one a lot more utility-wise than the other light Spanish-made knives we've been taking a look at. So, yeah, it's filling that niche. So, if you have any questions about this knife, we will be looking at some more Spanish-made knives. I have another, as I said, another Kudaman coming in, a Muela coming in. We'll see what happens after that. I am definitely impressed by what I'm seeing come out of Spain. It's different than some of the things we've reviewed earlier and taken a look at, but yeah. Um, 
interesting. I never quite know what I'm going to get and how much I'm going to like it. This one, I would say, is okay. I feel like I got my money's worth out of it. I feel like it'll probably be a good knife. Now, if any of these knives and their tang constructions fail, I will update you. Until then, you have any questions about this, have any other recommendations, please keep those coming. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, following my journey, subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, adding to our conversation, and I hope to see you back for the next episode.